Gatti, new market and business week started here on Frontier Opening Bell. Everyone, welcome to uh, the show. This uh, just a recap very quickly how most of the market finished off on a Friday. The Nigerian market finished the week uh, on Friday, 17 points better. The PRVM was soft by 0.08%, that roughly one tenth of a percent. The Egyptian market uh, was about 1.97%. The NSC, which is the Nairobi stock market, was the three basis points better. And the GSC down very sharply, 1.76%. Actually, the, the Egyptian market, the EGX30, 1.97 was the start of the week on Sunday. Sunday is the start of the business week on uh, uh, in the Egyptian market, the Cairo market, 14,843.05. Let's uh, put the market a bit uh, to on the downside and get up with what's making the headlines. Kenya says it's waiving import duty on maize and rice for the next six months because of the pressure that is coming through from the global food supply chain as well as local production. So imports has got a waiver for those two major staples in in Kenya. And NBC says it's 300 billion shillings is the goal in sight as bond that was uh, uh, floated was overbought by about 30%. And Kenya is also looking to remove all trade barriers between uh, the country and one of its strongest trade partners in the East African community, and that is Tanzania. That is expected to come in the new year, January 2023. And if you want to holiday this uh, uh, a year and into the new year, perhaps you've got to go. Maybe Radisson Group Hotel on the Zambezi River is where, or the Victoria Falls is where you should go. Near that place is where the Radisson Blue has put one of its iconic resort hotel on the African continent. You can just enjoy the Victoria Falls. That's near the Zambian resort. It's quite a very new and enthralling place to be to enjoy your holiday. You may want to give that a look over. By the way, let's uh, get into the West African in the Nigeria market. Okay, the, the world tra travel and tourism report saying that that se sector is likely to create about 5% or contribute average of 5% to Nigeria's GDP by between 2023 and the year 2030. It's a new report that begins to look at Nigeria's travel and tourism industry as um, a very critical part of the country's uh, GDP. In the meantime, we got good news out on Sunday. The Securities and Exchange Commission says it has approved a plan by the Nigerian Exchange Limited to set up a new NGX technology board. Now, the new board will now allow Nigerian Exchange to provide, to provide rules uh, and other um, uh, regulations guiding listing of technology-based companies on the Nigerian exchange. It's a new horizon for the Nigerian exchange. It's been talked about very various fora, summits, conferences over the many years that we, Nigeria needs a technology board where companies such as fintechs, Flutterwave, and others can actually get on board the Nigerian exchange, providing a different board for them to list. Now the SEC has approved that, and we're looking to see which technology company will raise the in, whether in financial services, in healthcare, in medicine, in agriculture, in services and other places, in other subsectors, let's see who raised the in. Congratulations to the SEC and to the Nigerian Exchange. This is expected to take up with immediate effect. And you have inflation to ease to around 25% by the end of next year. That's according to a new report published over the weekend by the Bank of Ghana. And the Bank for International Settlements says it has a new policy that now allows banks to hold about 2% of their reserves in cryptocurrency. Well, this has to be digested first across the various jurisdictions where the central banks across each country's or jurisdictions will allow as cryptocurrency in the reserves of those commercial banks. But the BIS has thrown out the new policy. You may want to read that up and get the details. And the uh, Vivo Energy in Cote d'Ivoire says it's... Um, a third quarter profit was about uh, 30%. And that looks like good news that could be used uh, for Vivo Energy listed on the, the BRVM. Okay, so the ESCOM crisis in South Africa, the energy crisis, the troubled energy, uh, uh, utility companies changes. Uh, the CEO is resigning, is going to be on seat till uh, uh, end of March next year. The whole load shedding will 
now be scaled down a little bit according to news over the weekend, but the debt is still an issue. About 400 billion rand is what the utility is owing. So the Minister of Finance, Enoch Godongwana, says the plan to pay creditors and keep the debt on uh, uh, in place is still on track. Try to have that program that helps escom decelerate or deleverage its loan book or uh, debt book is still uh, in place. That's a bit of assurance uh, coming through from the finance minister over the weekend. As far as foreign direct investment is concerned into Africa's most advanced economy, that is getting a bit sluggish from about 26 billion rand in the second quarter ended um, July, the third quarter number came in at a much lower, lower of 11.9 billion rand. And MTN is warning that in South Africa that pr prices could go up in the new year to play catch up with the rest of the telecommunications industry in South Africa, while Namibia, Total Energy says its contract for the second week for Venus appraisal campaign is now on the way. And good news for GSE listed growth points, uh, Green Bond, the International Finance Corporation, the private sector lending arm of the World Bank, bought 1 billion rand worth of that Green Bond. Part of the support that South Africa is getting, both the government and the private sector, to move into more sustainable energy, meeting up with the requirements of the 2030 uh, decarbonization and the climate change program. Uh, that is some good news uh, there for South Africa. Let's uh, talk to our, uh, get to the Northern African markets. Egypt and the United States says trade exchange was about $7.3 billion in the first nine months of this year. That's reported January to the end of September. While Algeria's gas exports is at a record high, 56 billion cubic feet for the 2022 year up to the reporting period last week. More good news, however, for Libya, as OPEC says it has cancelled about 20 million diners' debts. OPEC, uh, Libya needs all the help it can get. And, de and uh, getting a debt relief from OPEC is one good news. The Minister of um, Energy, as well as the Central Bank Governor, uh, are looking to higher oil production for Libya between uh, now and next year to help the country rebalance uh, its, uh, for, uh, its fiscal position. President El Sisi, in the meantime, is asking all developed countries and major countries in the world to support Africa as far as food sustainability is concerned. We need all the help we can get on this side of the Atlantic. And that's your Frontier Opening Bell to get Monday, the 19th of December started. This is the trading week that takes you all the way into Christmas long holiday. So make the most of it. And let's see how the market looks when we return on Tuesday, tomorrow, the 20th. Bye for now. Have a great day, everyone.